Hey, Earl, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm good. Okay. Um, how's so? How's the interview? Did it go? Uh, well? Yeah. Uh, it it. I hope it went well because yes. I. I answered every question that they questioned me that they gave me. So I think. I think it went well. <laughs> okay. That's, I hope. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good. Um, usually it's a case where you know they, they probably understand that you are nervous. Um, and you know sometimes they give you you know time to respond. And what can actually happen is that um, they they sort of have like if this isn't in person, then they sort of have a poker face where um, they try not to show their you know uh, facial expression. To make you think that they're not interested, but they actually are interested. So, um, yeah. you know, uh, you might think that, oh, did I say this wrong or did I say that wrong? And then um, eventually, it's like you end up getting the job, and mm. and like while while you haven't got a response um, from the email or a follow up, then you're always thinking at the back of your head, oh, did it actually go well? Did it actually go well? Because um, it happened happened a couple of times, you know, with with me and and my friends. Um, like um they've told me stories where yeah they're they had an interview and then they thought it went bad but then you know next thing they know they, they actually got the job and sometimes oh you can, yeah yeah sometimes you you can have it the other way around where you actually think you did um fairly well uh in the interview but then what ends up mm -hmm. happening is that yeah you actually um yeah it actually doesn't go go well so yeah yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, so I totally forgot, but um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe tell Tata happy birthday for me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh well, yeah, yeah. I think that's the that's the price you pay when when you're when you're running a business. You you totally forget about um, mm. you know, uh, the family that, matters, <laughs> family matters, family events, and then you know uh, people complain. Yeah. Oh, you don't go to, you know, you you don't call your relatives or you you don't go to family parties and all that kind of stuff because you're yeah you know you're, you're focusing too much on your business always busy yeah yeah mm -hmm. so i think i think it's like figuring out your goals like um there's going to be times where yeah you have to make sacrifices and spend some time away from family because you're focusing on a goal to achieve something and then after that then mm -hmm. um when you invest time with family you you focus fully on with your family instead of you know half half um yeah mm, yeah because you know if you just focus you know, if you just you know stay with your family and do do nothing then that's not good e that's not good either because um you have to sort of you know uh bring bread home and you know provide for the family as well so you have to yeah spend yeah. Some, some time to invest in that mm -hmm. anyways um yeah so I, I was uh creating a list of things like i was just um collating ideas to talk about um but i guess before mm. before i actually talk about them um i guess um can you actually like clarify uh what you wanted to to talk about before because you said that you wanted to um you were going to present um something to a business yeah. so you're presenting a service to them or a solution and then mm -hmm. um you also want to know how to make that long term and not just a once off service or um or development of a product for that um that customer right yeah so, so basically yeah so i talked uh one of my colleagues and he said that because he was uh he was my former um co-worker mm -hmm. at um at a hospital mm -hmm. so we were both um mas staff there mm -hmm. so we did uh mas um like roles uh hardware and software troubleshooting network mm -hmm. infrastructure um mm -hmm. and everything i did mm -hmm. and uh we've been there um two three years mm -hmm. we work we worked there for two and three years and then um once uh when we resigned there mm -hmm. um he talked to me and then he's like uh um i'm going i already talked to one of the directors of the hospital mm -hmm. uh doctor 
mm-hmm. and he's one of the head or chairman um mm-hmm. in the in the hospital mm-hmm. so he talked to him and he told them that um he wanted to be one uh wanted to be one of the uh service provide IT service providers mm-hmm. which uh you know the one that can help them with their servers you know patch uh patch server updates everything mm-hmm. um license paper license and microsoft mm-hmm. and he was like oh, and i was like oh that's great um and then i suggested him why don't we just uh, present him our business which you know i which is it uh, seventy it solutions mm-hmm. um cuz we're you know basically we're we're uh, we're providing se- uh, it IT services, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, our goal is to be one uh, to be one of the first IT services that's in the area because mm-hmm. other I, I you know I, IT they the IT services I, IT service providers that they contact mm-hmm. are not in the same, you know, not not in the same company. So which so, sorry uh, that, com- that company is yeah. actually outsourcing um, to other IT yeah, services. Yeah, there yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what what I'm proposing is mm-hmm. uh you know instead of looking for different companies to uh where they can get different IT services mm-hmm. they can own they can just get you know and they can just get one uh service provider which uh that provides several or many IT services Mm, mm, you know mm, mm. so so essentially uh, has... so essentially what i'm getting is that uh they're currently getting different types of it services from different uh different providers and they don't have mm. uh centralized or they don't have uh one solution yeah. where they can get it from one um provider mm-hmm. is that correct yeah uh, so yeah the problem with so um one thing the reason why a lot of companies um, only provide a certain specific type of services because they specialize in that area and they get really good at that that area, which is good because the thing is you can it's easier for a company to create systems and processes in their own internal company um, if they're only providing one type of service, right? And they can scale that easily. It's like yeah. it's kind of like when you're starting out, you don't become Walmart, right? Because um, it's just too expensive selling all different types of products, right? So you you focus on um, one so selling one type of product, and you you focus yeah. on selling that really well. And then after that, mm. um, then once you get really good at um, selling that, and you you know get profit, then that's when you can focus on mm. oh, let's add different services, right? Um, because you have to add you know extra skills in in the company. You have to hire um, extra people to be able to offer offer that but if you're only one person in the company or two two or three people and you only have a specific skill set i'm sorry skill set then you you can't you can't provide multiple services right though the thing is you you can be like sort of like a jack of all trades as well where yeah you're learning different things and you can provide different things but if um you know if they need a specialist for that area then they're going to have to hire out yeah um, yeah that's why that's why i told Yeah, that's why I told my colleague, um, you know, uh, even though uh, like we can, we can be the the main service provider, but we can also like outsource, um, you know, outsource uh, like teams where so they what? have the specialization on mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. you know service that yeah. they uh, that the company is looking for. So what you can do is you can become the platform. So, for example. Um, there are other um, specialized um, uh, specialist companies that are working directly uh, with the clients, right? And the clients mm. hiring each each of those providers separately. But what you could do is because since you have a general knowledge of you know the different areas, but you're not specialized in any specific area, um, you sure. basically know how to vet the you know those um, companies, right? And you mm. can you can um, get them to work through you. And then essentially, um, you might end up, you know, giving a certain specific package for the client, 
um, and it might be like a, a, a large, um, you know, price, right? But then because, yeah. um, because it's the sum of all, you know, every, you know, other services, right? Um, they don't have to worry about man management and then they can outsource management to, to you. So mm. um, that way it's like, you know, that the headache doesn't go to them, the headache goes to you, but then because you're, uh, you're good at, you know, um, you're yeah. knowledgeable in, in, in those fields, um, and it's yeah. your it's your sort of uh, it's your field of you know study. Then yeah, you can easily you could easily yeah. manage uh, manage them. And that's basically what I'm doing as well. Like um, for mm. me, it's like I'm a generalist. Like as in, I've yeah, learned, that's what I see. I've learned yeah, so that's many what I, things, mm. and then I'm getting yeah. other you know specialists or other um, individuals who are. You know, mm. like for example, a graphics designer is specialized in graphics design, and I'm getting him yeah. to do you know logos specifically, and then I'm combining uh -huh. that and I'm offering the whole thing to to the client. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, that's that's why that's what I told the um, the interviewer. He said mm. that uh, she said that um, what are your uh, um, he said uh, I he said something about um, the job, and then I was like. Uh, how can you how can you be like um productive or how can you be uh flexible in this uh certain type of job and i'm like well i don't consider myself as a specialist on some sort uh on on a specific field and i told her that i rather be a generalist so i can you know explore different branches of IT related uh, jobs, well, well, which is good. Yeah. Y you know what usually happens? Yeah. Uh, generalists, they're not really good at one particular thing. So they're really bad. Mm. In, they're, they're usually really bad employees, right? Because okay. um, they can't do the job really well, but they can do it fine enough and they understand, have a general understanding of what it is, right? Mm. So they're actually better at managers or, you know, high level management. They're good at, you know, being the CEO or, you know, the founder of the com company, right? Um, yeah. Now, specialists, they get really good at that thing that they're working on, right? They're actually better at being, you know, um, employees because um, they're, they're not good at hiring other people. They're not good at managing people. They, they don't understand other fields. They only understand their section. And then the, uh, a person that understands their field um, at a general level can say, oh, because you're really good at your field, I'm going to hire you to do to do that specific thing. And I'm going to hire someone else to do this specific thing. And I'm going to combine all the efforts together. And then yeah. it's, kind of, it's kind of like this. It's like, um, like for example, a band, right? A band has a, mm -hmm. say, a bass guitarist, um, electric guitarist, a singer, a drummer, and all that. But you, you rarely see like a one-man band where, you know, a person is playing the drums and the bass and the guitar and singing at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So you have yeah. those separate skill sets, but you need those separate skill sets to build that band, right? Um, so yeah, you, you'd um, you'd have to network with those other agencies and you know combine combine that. But at the same time, they have to sort of um, yeah, that they have to sort of want to work under you as well. So uh, as in. Uh, you have to be able to effectively manage them um, at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, um, yeah, I told my colleague uh, it's better, you know, because instead of, the, uh, you know, we're talking about the hospital, instead of them getting different um, different services from different uh, different companies, Mm -hmm. Why don't they just get um, the same services mm -hmm. on just one company, but in different departments, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is good because that's just one, you know, one company they're going to contact instead of, you know, getting other uh, companies to. Mm. Oh, quick question. So was it the interview mm -hmm. that you just had today? Was that um, what you're talking about where they're asking you about, you know, um, you be, being the one, uh, one person to deal with, and then um, you're basically. No, no, that, that's, oh, that's a different. That's different uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's for the um, the proposal that I'm going to uh, to present to the hospital, to the company that mm. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So, sir, I might. Yeah, I might. I might uh, make a propose a proposal or a presentation because mm -hmm. we might schedule a uh, a presentation for the board of directors. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe, maybe next month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I might, I might prepare for the presentation and, you know, uh, show, like showcase or present them our mm -hmm. services and the advantages that, you know, uh, what what are the advantages of working mm -hmm. with us, mm -hmm. and, you know, everything. That, like, mm -hmm. You know how an effective way to sort of um, present. Uh, present this uh have you you know started asking them about you know their specific issues in the company or ha, um like actually yeah how, actually how did you i was bring uh, this across like how, i how was you... uh we were a four we were uh, my, me and my colleague that uh the, mm -hmm. the one that i'm talking about we mm -hmm. were uh former employees uh, mm -hmm. of that hospital so we already know oh, what you, are the you, flaws uh, yeah 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 so you already have an understanding of um yeah you know the well, the issues yeah what yeah. Are, yeah what are the outages what are the flaws what are the mm -hmm. what are the things that they need what are the things that they don't need you know because mm -hmm. in, in that case you've already got it set because um because the thing is if if you were just going to say uh you know sell them your services and say oh um we can do this 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 without even asking what are the mm. issues? What problems do you have in your company? Then it's just going to be like a you know the pushy salesperson, right? Like, yeah. try not to be the pushy salesperson. Try to be like a doctor who actually prescribes um, the solution. So when a patient yeah. comes in, when a patient comes in to the hospital, right? Um, the doctor doesn't go up to the patient and says, "Oh, you know, you need this. You need antibiotics," without even asking the patient, right? Mm. Like, how does the the doctor know that the patient needs antibiotics or the patient needs you know a specific medication for their heart problem if um you know if they haven't diagnosed the issues right um and that's what a lot of common that's um what's common with a lot of salespeople is that uh they have this product and they want to push um sales and um they're sort of pushy and that they have like this quota that they want to you know um they have to meet this quote and they have to sell, 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 right? But yeah, um, the most effective way to you know um, convince them to um, buy your service is that you have to figure out what's what's the most painful thing that they're experiencing at the moment and um, how do you solve that for them? And if you can solve that for them, then yeah, you, they're gonna they're gonna hire you. So yeah. so like, what are what are the advantages? Mm -hmm. of working uh with us uh what are the things that what are the solutions that they're going to uh to get when working with us mm -hmm. and also what are the the things that they're you know you, you know what are I, the future expectation mm. you know when, when i showed you you know when i showed you click on yeah you know the application yeah um it's uh -huh. basically doing what you're trying to do um, in terms of you know the organization, so for example, before we we're using, well, we're still using it, but we're gonna go into my, we're going to migrate to um, ClickUp. But it's like you know you have Jira, you've got um, Google Cloud, you've got you know um, you know the calendar, you've got uh, QuickBooks and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, they're they're different platforms, but it's really difficult to you know bounce back and forth when you're organizing you know documents and then organizing um workflows and all that right now quick uh, sorry um click up is like a combination of you know all that so it's all in one place and essentially that's what you're you're basically trying to do um for your client so you should mm -hmm. sort of sell it to them as in because the thing is um the main points you're probably selling well most likely selling to your client is you're saving them time and money right so in terms of management mm -hmm. um like time isn't money, like they're two separate things, but the thing is their time and money are both valuable, right? So if you save them time and money, then yeah, obviously they're gonna they're gonna work with you, right? So if you can yeah. if if you 
if you present it in a way that you're just shooting facts out, then it's just going to bore, bore them, right? But then if you can show metrics and show them, oh, if we did this, then we'll cut down your, you know, the time that you manage or um, if we did. Yeah, I, yeah that's this, what I'm, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, since they have, they already have uh, an IT team mm -hmm. working, yeah, working on their um, operations, because mm -hmm. uh, their job description is basically um, doing the operations, uh, like MS stuff, um, mm -hmm. hardware and software troubleshooting, mm -hmm. but they don't have the expertise on. Uh, server, uh, like server configuration, mm -hmm. um, network configuration. Mm -hmm. They're only focused on the um, on the operations of the hospital, the so hospital software, the you know, the like cl clerical work of like the hospital, you know, but mm -hmm. the other branches of it they, they, they you know the 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 new stuff doesn't know that because mm, mm -hmm. yeah the, the thing is as well is um it is a good idea but then how do you train how do you train people in cross-disciplinary fields you know like yeah. for example no that, that's what that's what i'm saying uh i told i i told my colleague uh it's better for them, you know, to hire us as, you know, as the one who makes the network network infrastructure, the, mm -hmm. um, the server configurations, oh. the, you know, other service providing. No, what, what, but what there, I. So what I'm pertaining to is that, um, uh -huh. so the current, um, you know, service providers they only are experienced in one thing because mm. it's easier to train, you know, new people and stuff um, that one specific thing, right? But then if you start being yeah. a provider for for everything, right? So like networking and, and you know, all the IT um, services, right? Uh, mm. Now you have to think about scaling and now you have to think about if you were to hire Hiring people, other people. Yeah, if you were to yeah. hire people on your team, how are you going to train them to be cross-disciplinary to be able to manage, you know, the other, um, you know, the other, right, yeah, yeah. So, so this is what, I, yeah, department. So this is what I was thinking in my business, like, because in 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 my business, it's like um, the product that I'm eventually going to think about making is very, 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 very complex, right? So, I have to think mm. about if it's going to be complex, right? And I'm going to get people to adopt it. How do I get people on board, and how do I train them? Because um, it's a very niche field, but at the same time, it's like you, you need um, you need uh, people that are able to learn different fields. So, for example, um, if you're uh, in product development, right? I'll give you an example. In product development, if you're uh, developing a product and you're using a specific technology and you end up, say, for example, if you use C++, right? Then, yeah. sure, your product is going to be really efficient and really, you know, if if you designed it really well, it's going to be, you know, um, really fast, right, and optimized, right. But the thing is, now you have to think about how are you going to maintain it because C plus plus is a really difficult language to learn. So you're going to have to look for people who who know C plus plus, and it's really hard to find that that um, skill set. Now. If um, if you write the code in say JavaScript, there's a ton of JavaScript programmers out there. So even if even though it's less efficient, mm -hmm. um, it's easier to find people in that field. So the thing is, if you're going to offer a service that is is like all-in-one service, you're going to have to choose you know technologies or um, processes that is easy to learn. And it's easy to train people when you onboard people or you onboard um, different departments into your your company. You're going to have to um, look for easier solutions. You know, yeah. as in, as so in, what? As in, try not to yeah. try not to look for customized solutions because the more custom you you make it, um, the more you have to, you know, make your own 
um, you know, you, you have to make your own training system to train to onboard onboard people. Um, but if you if you use like off the shelf systems that are already made, right, um, then it's easy to find you know online content for that, or it's easy to find resources mm. um, to be able to train you know uh, train people. So for example, um, for 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 me, it's like I, I try to use tools that are um, used, um, you know, around the world and it's really popular so that it's easy to find, mm. say, tutorials online or it's easy to find Udemy courses um, or, you know, yeah, so Udemy courses and then I could just send, um, send those courses to uh, people that I'm going to train and then just get them to watch the course and go through that course and, and do do practice um practice runs yeah, yeah. Through, you know uh trial projects mm. right and then they can learn um the ins yeah. and outs of it um because everything's there already but if if you if you try to create a system where um it's very niche and you're providing that to the customer then you're going to have to train people on that yeah 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 so i think I think for now, the thing that we're going to present mm -hmm. are the basic uh, services that we have. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, what do you call this? You know, service, uh, the things that they need, mm -hmm. you know, look, which look is the, uh, server. Yeah. Look for the things that they need, sure. the most simplest to implement. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. I'm going to talk about with my colleague this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, maybe after that, I'm going to start to. Uh, I might also uh, consult. Um, what are the things mm -hmm. that I need to you know to prepare uh, with you um, in terms of you know presenting this uh, this kind of um, presentation to the. To, to the company. Mm -hmm. Another thing is um, maybe talk to the other service providers um, that are already working with them, because if they're already working mm -hmm. with them, they they must have done something right to get the the position in the first place. You know, like ask them. Yeah. You know, uh, how did they present their services, and then maybe maybe um, because the thing is, maybe what you, you can do is you can actually work with both. Um, both the client and those services as well, because if you end up, you know, if you end up replacing, um, replacing them. them, right. They might, you know, uh, yeah, you might burn some bridges, you know, so, um, it's best not to burn some bridges. So figure out a way where you can sort of say, Oh, I want a win-win situation. Um, let's work mm -hmm. with, with both part, um, both parties. Let's say that if you were the middleman, um, say, what what if this right? What if the the service providers um, that are already working for the the hospital? What if they're already doing a good job, but it's just that you need someone to manage them, and and the hospital just. Uh, hey Earl, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. The internet disconnected. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what was I saying? I'm just trying to remember. Um, um like ask the other yeah. service providers yeah yeah because i think um if the services that they're providing is um okay right uh yeah and you know what, what's the point of because because there's going to be overhead in sort of changing systems and updating the systems because you have to say you first you, you're going to have to implement your new systems if you're going to replace the other um, providers and then you're mm -hmm. going to have to provide training and then you're going to have to provide maintenance and then you know there's a lot of overhead so it's not just the work that you have to do to implement the systems it's a lot of work to to do you know the other things right um, so the cost might outweigh the benefits in, in in terms of the migration over to you know one service provider right so what you could do is that uh, yeah, you, you work in between them, you could become the middleman and sort of make the management of the team, the um, departments easier. Um, mm. So you can, 
you can make an agreement with the, the providers and say, oh, um, you know, you'll work with the clients and the clients will, you know, pay you, um, you know, because they're already paying a certain amount for each service provider, but then obviously they're going to have to pay an extra more amount for, you know, managing um, managing the other departments, right? So, yeah, I guess it's going to take some time to do, say, to um, work with those uh, different departments because you have to yeah. ask around what, what are their processes um, and how do you, yeah, how do you sort of communicate between um, the clients and and the you know the service providers as well, you know, and and also ask ask them as well what issues that are they having because sometimes sometimes what can happen is that um, you know companies they hire uh, contractors or they hire agencies um, but they don't understand the technological side so there's a kind of a communication. Um, barrier between the, the the tech guys and the actual um, company itself. So there has, and that's the reason why it's good to have like a middleman where you understand the client, but you also understand the uh, the engineers and the you know the the tech guys. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So yeah, m- maybe so, maybe it's maybe. You're, well, I can. What yeah. I can do is like in, instead of replacing their service providers i can mm-hmm. be like an alternative uh like an, an alter uh our business can be an alternative if service provider can provide the you know um their specific like service mm-hmm. for them mm-hmm. you know they can just contact us instead of you know looking for different you know because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. different companies well yeah, I guess first, um, just aim for you know the main, um, you know, like the the big the big issues first, and then after that, then go towards the smaller issues. So if, um, and, and the thing is, um, you don't want to sort of change your systems overnight, right? So you might have to set up a uh, test system for them to try out, and then um, run that. In, in at the same time with their current systems so that there's no there's no downtime or there's no disruptions mm. yeah because um if you if you present to them and say oh we're going to implement this and then um uh, you implement it and then they have to have their systems down um while you implement it then yeah they're not going to want you to implement it but you have to yes. run it at the same time as um, oh. as their current systems and then after that when it's ready then you make the switch it's, it's sort of like it's sort of like a b a b servers or um you know I, I think they call it red blue or red green um servers where that um when you're deploying software um and you're making updates you usually have one that's live and one that's uh not live and that's where you're doing developments and then once you're ready for a release you swap the servers over and then you start yeah. developing on you know the offline um server again and then you know that's how you sort of do updates so that your mm. customers your customers don't see downtime but um yeah you're, you're constantly updating the system so um yeah may, maybe what you can do is if if you're at the point of integrating say the service providers what you can do is you can get them to um, provide their current service while at the same time part of their team is helping you implement a you know, a centralized platform where you can, you know, mm. um, offer it to the client. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, at the same time, while you're, while you're sort of um, creating that, you know, p- the centralized platform for them to sort of get the services from you, um, they have to have the budget to fund that while it's not being, you know, while it's not earning the money or while it's not being profitable, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you you have to create a roadmap for them and say, oh, um, say within um, because it's probably going to take like how long do you reckon it's going to take you to implement implement that? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Because so, that's going to be a lot of process to implement that. Yeah, it's probably going to take more than a year. A year. Yeah, because it's not yeah. just it's not just one single app. 
it's like mm -hmm. you know a, a, a big system a big system yeah 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 and also they're planning to uh to do server migration because mm -hmm. their uh their database is not that um organized so mm -hmm. they need someone to uh to migrate their um like their database to another server and like clean uh and also clean the database uh mm -hmm. with unnecessary um like records mm -hmm. which they don't use anymore mm -hmm. so yeah i think they also need someone who has um knowledge with data science mm -hmm. um database or uh, database um like you know database systems mm -hmm. mm. the um also in the the perspective of the client as well um sometimes it's good to have multiple providers uh reason being is that if you just have one provider what if that provider you know fails right like you have one failure point and if that if their systems fail then you know the the business basically loses everything right so mm. sometimes it's good for the company to have redundancies um so they might have multiple companies working on multiple things but then if one company fails then you know uh they can replace it with another company right so this is just in the perspective of the client and that's probably one of the reasons why they want multiple um agencies or multiple service providers because they have a um they have redundancies the downside to that is it's going to be more um difficult to manage um those different uh different um departments different agencies and that's why you have to have a balance between redundancy and also um centralization and and you know um all in one um service provider you know yeah, yeah yeah because for example for example just like just like before right um the internet connection right if i only had one internet connection right and then the internet connection was unstable then yeah the our, our meeting dropped out and i i can't um restart the meeting because that was my only internet connection right but because i also have my mobile data from from my mobile i can just switch switch easily to my mobile because i've got that um got that on hand you know yeah 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 so you have a backup yeah like, back, backup. Uh, so to say so to say. yeah so so the thing is you also have to to show them oh um yeah we'll be your single provider but then you also have to show them that um if something goes wrong with us then this is like an alternative that we can um we can provide you like you can go directly to you know the the other um uh the, the other providers so you, you give mm -hmm. them you give them different options as well because then you know you don't want you don't want that company to just be reliant on that one thing you know yeah 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 so like uh i'm giving them an, an option like another solution Mm -hmm. for them to be able to uh like to make their operations much more efficient and much more re mm -hmm. reliable mm -hmm. and and that, that's the thing in terms of working with them like long term you just have to constantly keep looking for issues that you can solve um because the thing is once you solve what one, one issue right and then they don't they they run out of the need for you to solve that issue then why should they hire you anyways right so like yeah. for example if they just had one project and, and that's why um there's a lot of companies right they they uh, have this pet project and then they they hire programmers to make it and once that that um project is yeah. finished yeah. They, they fire all the the programmers because it was just that one project but if if the company needed that service for you know um for a long time period for, for a long time period so like it's they're using it um you know continuously and then there's additional things that they need maintains for then that's mm. that's why they need to hire you know um more more developers for example mm. like facebook there's constant updates constant you know maintains and then even web development that there's constant need for you know updates and security updates and, and maintains mm. for websites and that's why a lot of you know agencies um, provide retainers for their customers because um you know that benefits the customer in terms of if something goes wrong then 
um, the developers can fix their website straight away. And also it means that the, the developers have constant income and, and, and that's what you, you have to focus on, figure out um, things that you could provide them that, you know, they come back to you for, for more. So, mm. so for example, um, for example, if, if you, if you produced um, pens, right, then uh, you're, you're going to keep um, selling pens because people use pens, um, pens to write, write things, right. And it runs out of ink and then they're going to buy more because it's, it, it's, it's something that they, they continuously need to use. So, um, it's not a one-off thing that they buy, they continuously buy it. Um, so you have to figure out what product or service that are you going to provide for them that they're going to come back for more because they need, they, they need it. Um, same thing like, you know, for example, mechanics, right? Um, mechanics are always going to have a job because there's always um, maintenance that is needed on a car, right? Mm. When you buy a car, yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's always continuous it's gonna, cost. It's, yeah. yeah. Like there's no, um, you're, 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 when you buy a car, you can't um, not have it maintained. So you have to get it maintained or else it's going to break down. So the mechanics are always going to have a job to, you know, um, fix it every, or, or change the oil for every, you know, 10,000, 10,000 kilometers. And that's the same thing with IT service provider. Um, you, you need, you know, to, sell them a product or service that um, reoccurs, right? So that's the reason why a lot of software um, software companies, instead of um, selling their product to the customer once off, right? Which is what they used to do. They used to just, you know, sell licenses for a once off. And then what they had to do was they had to make another upgrade to the, the software to make, to give the incentive for the customer to buy the new version. So. Um, and then they, they sort of changed it now to a subscription model where, yeah, um, you don't have to, you know, download the, the software. You just, you know, sign up for mm. um, a subscription for that software and then you can use it um, continuously so long as you, you know, pay per month, right? And for the customer, it's like, oh, if I'm only paying $10, $15 per month, then that's fine. But then because the company is, well, because that company has millions of users then they're making a lot of um, income from that every single month yeah so uh, so don't think of selling them one product right think of selling yeah. them um, something that reoccurs um, and has consistent income over time yeah, mm. yeah. like um let's say uh, like microsoft licensing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know like we can provide because Actually, their licenses are already expired. Like mm -hmm. they've been using until now. They're using Microsoft Office twenty two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have to upgrade their um, licenses, and also their computer units are already outdated. Mm -hmm. So that's also that. So the the flaws that we uh, that we've found, like the the things that we've found mm -hmm. um, on, uh, in the company are like the computer units, mm -hmm. the licenses, the uh, antivirus and firewall, also the servers. So those are the the main things that are uh, that they need to uh, to fix. Now the thing is, do they need to fix it? Because because the thing is, their yeah. company. Their company could be running fine with, with old software because there's a lot of companies that stay with old software and they don't need to up update it because it doesn't change you know yeah, the thing yeah but uh, the it, thing is but but the thing is they're they're a hospital you know so a lot um their equipments also upgrade their software so mm -hmm. if their softwares aren't compatible with the operating system or the license that they have they won't be able to use their equipment because their uh, their mm -hmm. computer units are also outdated. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you need to sell to them. You need to say that oh, um, you need us on a retainer to maintain your systems because if not, then your software will be out of date 
and you won't be able to yeah. use these um you won't be able to use you know um these new tools or or um uh these new applications if you don't update uh your your systems yeah so um you could do it like you can be a one-self person where you know they just hire you on the spot to do that or you can say oh if you put us on a retainer then we could make sure that every single month we provide mm. you with, with this amount of um you know upgrades and we can uh -huh. also we could also monitor your systems as well um and but the thing is uh the retainer right you can't just charge them a lot and then essentially at some points mm. they might not like you might not actually do any maintains because sometimes you only need to update the systems once in a while. And then after that, they're not um, really paying you for, for anything else. Right. Or, or yeah. actually, you're not actually doing anything else and they're still paying you for, for, so, uh, for that. Yeah. So in, in that case, we're going, we're just going to be a, a contra contractual um, like service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it could be temporary. It, well, no, well, it, it depends. Right um yeah. and, and that's where it comes down to how much do they have to spend because sometimes companies want to spend um, a certain amount of like a budget right because they don't want to have the headache of of you know figuring out oh how much is each individual thing going to cost because you know that requires overhead in terms of management like the budgeting and all that if um some companies that have say we, we have a certain budget for um, for this department. Um, and if it's not used, then they get less of a budget in the next, you know, in, in, in the next um, financial year, right? Or the next mm -hmm. um, quarter or something like that. So, so the, essentially, um, yeah, if they have a budget for it, then you have to figure out, oh, so how do we use that budget effectively as well? Mm -hmm. um, but it has to be worth their while and also, uh, you have to remove the friction from them. So if if it it takes if if you take away, you know the issues and management and pain from away from them, then they'll probably if if it's within their budget, they'll probably be happy enough to you know hire you guys for a long period of time because um, they don't have to deal with that. You know, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like this. It's like um, there's a lot of people that would want. Um, like a, a website really cheap and then they could go to an individual freelancer or they could get it done themselves like it's far cheaper that way but there's just and, and there's a lot of tutorials online for them to learn how to do that right but it's just a lot of um headache to go through all of that and that's why people yeah. people actually pay um you know pay agencies to to do it for them because even if an agency costs a lot more right it's like the agency takes care of everything you don't have to worry about that you know like why does why why does a company have to worry about the ssl security of of their website where their their, their uh point of expertise is you know um like for example this hospital their point of expertise is uh treating patients ailments right so they could care less about you know the, the tech side right but so that that's why they want you know they they want someone else to to handle those issues, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, who knows? Um, but the thing is, if if they're a small hospital, then yeah, they might not have that budget, right? But if they're a relatively large hospital and they're government funded, or if if it's if it's private, if it's a private hospital, then yeah, it's a um, they could have. It's a private more. hospital. Yeah. Ah, okay. So they may or may not have like the the income, but yeah. Um, you just have to figure out what their budget is and, you know, um, just like when I was telling you before, like you have to sort of um, gauge, you know, their pricing uh, pricing range and that's when you're going to have to negotiate, right? So you're going to have to figure out how much it's worth, like the amount of work. So, so in, in that, in that um, proposal, right, are you going to show them your pricing or are you just going to present what services you're going to provide for them because i, I think in, in this sense if it's an ongoing thing i don't think you should you know present them a package i think you should say you know um it's going to be an ongoing cost right 
and then price it accordingly as, as you go down the line. But then you you need to ask them how much of a budget do they have annually, you know, yeah. because you could be working for them for five, uh, uh, five, 10 years, but a lot of companies want to, a lot of companies um, want to have a cap on their expenditures, right? So for example, mm. if you can't, you're not going to be able to estimate the total costs within um, five to 10 years, like, because no one knows that you're not going to know how much work you did within five to 10 years, right? But at the same token, um, a lot of companies will, will probably say, oh yeah, we want our costs capped at $100,000 per year, or we want it capped, you know, $500,000 per year, right? So yeah, they're probably going to have a um, ceiling in terms of how much of the cost that they want to spend. And you have to work, yeah. on, you have to work around that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So according to their budget, whatever the budget they have, um, you just have to adjust what you're offering them. So you can still work with their budget, even if it's low or high. Right. But you just have to change the, what you're offering them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think they're already calling me. <laughs> We're going to celebrate. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Birthday. yeah. 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 Um, so yeah. Yeah, I guess we can continue, um, continue this mm -hmm. another time as well. But um, yeah. did I sort of answer most of, um, mostly what you mm -hmm. wanted to talk about? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I've learned a lot. You know, instead of um, just going through um, through uh, on the proposal, I've thought about. Uh, I've learned that um, it's not it's not just that, but you have to be like. You have to have that wit on how to present it, on how to get like the approval, and you know, be yeah. more uh, you know wise on making decisions. Yeah, because it's it's kind of like um, it, you're you're making well because you worked for them already, so you you already made sort of a first impression on them. Yeah. In, anyways, but yeah, it, it, it's sort of like um, yeah, the the bigger the job, the harder the sale, you know? So mm -hmm. um, you have to sort of think um, think it through like the, so if you're just selling one single pen, right? It's easy enough to to tell someone, oh, do you need a pen? Um, you don't have a pen, you need to write something. So buy this pen, right? Um, but if you're selling some, someone that, if you're selling a product that's like say $200,000 or something like that, then the, the, cycle the sales cycle right will take will probably mm. take months months of going back and forth back and forth because for example when people are buying a house they don't just go oh i'm gonna buy a house straight away right um it takes them months to decide which house are they gonna buy right and then which one's the right one for them so you have to yeah. go back and forth they're gonna have a lot of objections but you have to go back and forth back and forth and that's just the normal normal process yeah. of it because really if you were in their shoes and um they were asking you for you know um you know a really high price then you're going to need some time to sort of think um uh, think it through think it through because it's a major decision yeah so it's it's going to take time and you know um the thing is the first proposal might not be perfect and you might present it to them first and then they might say oh yeah i don't like um I don't, I don't like it right but don't quit at that point you have to figure out why they didn't like your proposal and you have to ask them oh so what's your objective because they're going to have objections and then um then you sort of adjust adjust and say oh um could we sort of negotiate on this then and, and let's see um what we can you know what we can come up with and what we can, can compromise with what with what well, what can we sort of um settle on you know so um at the start of the proposal, you're not going to know that because um, you're just starting that proposal, right? But it's going to take, say, a lot of back and forth. Um, mm. For example, like one of my my customers is like, before I was proposing to him, you know, oh, this e-commerce site is going to cost you twenty thousand dollars, and he's like, oh, I was asking him, oh, do you have the budget for that? And then he's like, oh, that's too expensive. So yeah. I told him, oh, so let's renegotiate this. Let's figure out how you can sort of afford this. Um, in the future, but for now, in terms of cash flow, what we can do is set you up a 
eBay store, right? Um, and then you can start selling um, things on eBay and start earning an income so that you can eventually fund that e-commerce store that you want to create later on. Um, I didn't go yeah. and say, oh, because you, you, because you couldn't um, agree with this you know, proposal for the e-commerce store, I'm not going to work with you, right? I, I didn't say that. Um, so you have to find other ways to provide, you know, the solution because other, yeah, yeah. If one solution doesn't work, it means that's not what they're looking for. So you have yeah. to keep on. So so you need to have like um, alter uh, alternatives. Yeah, yeah. Because for example, um, for example, if there was only one brand of computers, right, then everyone wouldn't have much of a choice, right? They'd buy the same computer, right? But because um, because there's like, you know, an Apple, there's, you know, uh, Toshiba, there's a Lenovo, there's, you know, Samsung, there's different types of brands, right? People have a choice, right? And it's good to give people a choice, um, but that's how you sort of also create, create a competitive edge because since there's different choices, you can you can show that you're different from, from the rest of the people, you know? So, you, you have to give them a choice as well. Um, but at the same time, you have to show them, oh, why are we the best choice out of the other choices? Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. so that, that's why you have to like, yeah. Um, so you're on the right track in terms of, yeah, um, you're, the other service providers where you become competitive is that, yeah, you're offering a service that, you know, has everything. So that's your competitive edge. So that, that's why you do, um, um, you know, like a, there's this thing called the SWOT analysis. So in a business mm -hmm. plan, you usually have like a SWOT analysis. Um, and it's basically uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? So it's, yeah. Um, and we can go through, through that over like in a later time, but it, it's sort of like, you're figuring out what strengths your, your company has, what weaknesses your company has and opportunities and your threats. Like the threats are basically your competitors or, um, you know, what are the, yeah, the downsides to your um, company. But yeah. Um, yeah. I think they're calling me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, no worries. Um, uh, yeah, uh, okay. Thanks, yeah. No, no worries. Um, I'll, I'll talk to you later then. And yeah, okay. thanks for joining the meeting. But yeah, okay. um, happy, happy birthday to Tata as well. Yeah. So uh, later. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll send him your regards. Okay. No worries. Okay. Okay. No worries. Thanks. No worries. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.